The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am reviewing the Seeker cards from the uh, Forgotten Age, the third deluxe expansion for the Arkham Horror LCG. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So without uh, further ado, let's get started. The uh, first Seeker card in the box is Dr. Ellie Horowitz, Assistant Curator. She's a three-cost asset with the willpower skill icon and the ally and assistant traits. She takes up an ally slot and has one health and two sanity. She has the game text response. After Dr. Ellie Horowitz enters play, search the top nine cards of your deck for a relic asset and attach it to her. Shuffle your deck. Each relic asset attached to Dr. Ellie Horowitz uh, does not take up uh, any slots. It is uh, still considered to be in play and under your control. Dr. Ellie Horowitz is the first of several cards in the box that synergize with the Relic trait. Horowitz is a natural fit to, with the new Seeker Investigator in this box, Ursula Downs, the Explorer, who can include Relic cards level 0 to 4 in her deck. There are quite a few other Investigators who can put the good Doctor to use, though, so it will be interesting to see whether Horowitz makes the cut in any other decks besides Ursula's. One of the uh, biggest problems that uh, new Seeker allies face is that uh, Dr. Mylan Christopher exists in the card pool. Christopher's ability to generate a pile of resources turn after turn makes it uh, difficult for other allies to compete to, for that coveted ally slot. Horowitz is among the few Seeker allies who can give Christopher a run for his money, since her response lets you not only tutor for a relic but also play it for free, saving you some uh, precious resources uh, in the bargain. If you uh, play Horowitz in combination with uh, Unearth the uh, Ancients, a Seeker event uh, that's also in this box, that lets you play an asset, asset or relic for free by taking an Investigate action, you could uh, potentially save yourself enough resources over the course of the game that you won't miss uh, Dr. Mylan Christopher that much in your deck. And on top of all that, uh, Horowitz behaves like an extra hand or accessory slot, allowing you to play uh, multiple relics without having to invest in the uh, three experience points on a relic hunter from the Essex County Express. That's uh, a lot of value for a level zero card. Horowitz uh, lets you fetch a relic from your deck and attach it to her for, for free, so it's uh, worth taking a look at some of uh, Ursula's options. Most uh, relics cost experience points, so you're not going to have a lot of uh, choice at the start of a campaign. Decorated Skull, Doom Begets Doom, the uh, Chthonian Stone, T Stygian Water Mark, and uh, Tooth of Esli. Uh, one day I'll figure out how to pronounce that. Uh, Mortal Reminder are the uh, only level 0 relics in the game. Fortunately, they are all in the uh, Forgotten Age Deluxe expansion, so if you want to explore the rel Relic Hunter archetype, you uh, don't really need anything besides this expansion and uh, the core set. Once uh, you've earned a few experience points, you can experiment with cards such as uh, Ancient Stone Unidentified, Grotesque Statue, Lucky Dice, the Gold Pocket Watch, or the Key of Yeast. It's a, a safe bet we're going to see a few more relics released during the Forgotten Age cycle, so Horowitz's value is uh, only going to increase as the cycle goes on. It's uh, worth noting that Horowitz's game text refers to uh, each relic attached to her, which suggests there may be some way of attaching more than one relic to her at uh, some point in the future. I don't know what the uh, designers have in store for us, but I could certainly see there being an event that uh, lets you attach items and or relics to allies. I mean, really, why, why would you bother bringing all of these allies along on an expedition with you into the jungle unless they could carry some of that stuff for you? I guess we'll uh, find out later in this cycle if uh, such a card exists or not. The only problem with uh, Dr. Ellie Horowitz is that she can only take uh, one horror for you. Any more damage or horror than that and uh, Horowitz is defeated and you're going to lose your relic too. There are several encounter cards such as Crypt Chill from the core set, Claws of Steam from the Essex County Express, and uh, Kidnap from Blood on the Altar that either target assets in general or allies in particular. I've uh, heard the death toll on a typical Leo Anderson expedition can be uh, pretty catastrophic, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Forgotten Age includes a lot to include some ally hate cards. Finding a way to protect Horowitz uh, 
wouldn't be uh, finding a way to protect Horowitz uh, and the relics she possesses from harm is something that's uh, certainly worth considering before heading out on the campaign trail. Perhaps you've got a guardian friend who can uh, make uh, Dr. Ellie Horowitz a trusted ally and uh, give that uh, health and sanity a little boost. An ally, uh, a tutor, an extra hand or accessory slot, and a cost reducer all rolled into one. Dr. Ellie Horowitz has a lot going for her for a level zero card. I expect to see a lot of her, uh, I expect her to see a lot of play in Ursula decks, but I uh, wouldn't be surprised in the least to see her appear in uh, with other investigators who, ex who have access to the secret card pool. If you're uh, planning to build a deck around the Key of Yeast, for example, Horowitz is uh, almost a no-brainer since she can fetch and hold that powerful relic for you. I uh, also wouldn't be too surprised if we see an upgrade uh, for Horowitz before the cycle is through. Much uh, like Peter Sylvester before her, Horowitz is, is a, a really good card with a little bit uh, of room left over to grow into a, a, into a truly iconic card. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if... Uh, if we will in fact see an upgrade for her. Great card for the uh, for that uh, Relic Hunter archetype. The second seeker card in the box is Ancient Stone, Unidentified. It's a one cost asset that costs one experience point. It has an intellect skill icon, the item and relic traits, and it will take up a hand slot. It has the game text Investigate. Your location gets plus three shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at your location, discard Ancient Stone, and record in your campaign log that you have identified the stone. Next to this, in parentheses, record the difficulty of this skill test. Ancient Stone Unidentified is the strange solution or archaic glyphs of the Forgotten Age cycle. The uh, designers could have played it safe and stuck uh, to the Trident 2 template they have uh, worked with in the past two deluxe expansions, but they uh, break some new ground with the Ancient Stone, which is uh, really befitting an expansion focused on exploration. First, uh, unlike uh, previous mysterious objects, the Ancient Stone costs an experience point. You uh, can not start the campaign with the Ancient Stone in your deck. You've, uh, you've really got to earn it. And it's uh, safe to assume that you'll only be able to include the upgraded asset in your deck by upgrading to it directly from the Ancient Stone Unidentified. So it's going to be interesting to see how much the upgrade or upgrades cost. Each of the uh, Strange Solution upgrades cost 4 experience points, while the Archaic Glyphs upgrades cost 3. So I could easily, easily see you spending 1 experience point for the Ancient Stone Unidentified and then an additional 2 or 3 experience points for the upgrade. The Ancient Stone is non-unique, so uh, don't forget to include a copy of uh, Shrewd Analysis in your Seeker decks once it comes out in the Threads of Fate Mythos pack, so you can upgrade a second copy of Ancient Stone at uh, no experience point cost. Second, it's uh, not enough to simply identify the Ancient Stone. You need to record the difficulty of the skill test required to identify it. The uh, minimum difficulty of the skill test is going to be around 4, barring any uh, arcane insight shenanigans, but an aggressive investigator with intellect skill icons to spare could certainly push that quite a bit higher, depending on the locations in play. I think this is a, a really cool mechanic, and I could see the designers taking it in a few different directions. Perhaps the, uh, the difficulty of the skill test will equate with the number of charges on the upgrade or upgrades. Or perhaps the Ancient Stone will have a different upgrade, uh, different upgrades available depending on uh, the difficulty of the skill test. Say one Ancient Stone, say uh, if you passed an Intellect 4 skill test, uh, you'd have one ability, and if another if you passed an Intellect 5 skill test, and yet another if you passed Intellect uh, 6 skill test. Or perhaps there is a there's only going to be one upgrade for the Ancient Stone, but it will have several different abilities which investigators can unlock depending on the diff difficulty of the skill test that they passed. For example, if you passed an Intellect 4 skill test, the upgrade would have one ability, but if you passed the Intellect 5 or Intellect 6 skill test, the upgrade would have two, and so on. There are uh, plenty of different options that the uh, designers can go with, so I'm, I'm very excited to see which uh, way the designers choose to go with the uh, upgrades for the Ancient Stone. 
It's uh, worth noting that the Ancient Stone also synergizes with several other secret cards in this box that, box that target relics. Dr. Ellie Horowitz lets you search the top nine cards of your deck for the Ancient Stone and attach it to her. While the Ancient Stone is attached to Dr. Ellie Horowitz, it uh, does not take up a hand slot. You could uh, try to play the Ancient Stone for free using Unearth the Ancients, the, uh, and uh, a Seeker should have really no problem passing an Intellect 1 skill test. You uh, also get to draw a card if you're successful, which is, uh, is pretty sweet in my view. I think it's uh, safe to assume that Dr. Ellie Horowitz and Unearth the Ancients will also be able to target the, uh, the Ancient Stones upgrade or upgrades when we see them. The uh, unidentified mechanic is uh, one of my favorite parts about this game, but it's uh, difficult to rate a card like Ancient Stone because uh, we simply don't know the benefits of identifying it. I feel like the designers are setting up Ancient Stone to be really the linchpin of the Relic Hunter ar deck archetype that is developed in this box. The upgrader upgrades for Ancient Stone will need to be powerful to, uh, to compete with some of the other rel relics available in the game including the Grotesque Statue from the Core Set and the Key of Yeast from uh, the Dim Carcosa Mythos Pack. The uh, key in particular is going to be a very tempting purchase for Ursula Downs. Ursula can uh, also take Sharon's Obel from Dim Carcosa, so it won't be difficult for her to afford a copy or two of the key as long as she can uh, stay alive during the scenarios. She can also tutor for the key using Dr. Ellie Horowitz or uh, one of the other tutors in the Seeker class. Ancient uh, Stone is going to have to be powerful indeed to, uh, to compete with a card uh, that adds 3 to all of your stats once it's up and running. And uh, I guess we'll find out later this cycle whether uh, Ancient Stone is a heavyweight or it's going to be dead weight uh, that is uh, relegated to the binder. The uh, third Seeker card in the box if, is the Tooth of Edsley Mortal Reminder. It's a 3-cost asset with a willpower skill icon and the item and relic traits. It takes up the accessory slot and it has the game text. You get plus 1 willpower and plus 1 agility while resolving an ability on a treachery card. It also has a response after you succeed at a skill test while resolving an ability on a treachery card. Exhaust Tooth of Esdly to draw one card. The uh, Tooth of Edsley is the first card that we've seen in the Arkham Horror LCG that provides a passive boost uh, for stats only while resolving a specific ability, in this case uh, willpower or agility skill tests on treachery cards. The uh, value of the Tooth depends on the scenario, but it's uh, safe to say that willpower and agility skill tests are by far the most common type of tests on treachery cards. Treachery is feature featuring uh, willpower skill tests were a dime a dozen during the Dunwich Legacy and Path to Carcosa campaigns, and uh, but I expect uh, agility skill tests to gain some ground during the Forgotten Age. After all, you uh, really can't uh, be exploring the jungle unless you are swinging across chasms and uh, dodging boulders a la Indiana Jones. The Tooth is a relic which is a common theme among the uh, Seeker cards in the Forgotten Age box. Three resources feels like a lot to pay for a card uh, that helps you against only treacheries, but there are at least uh, two ways to get around paying full price for it. You can tutor up the tooth for free uh, after you play Dr. Ellie Horowitz, or you can play it for free as long as you can pass an Intellect 3 skill test with Unearth the Ancients. Ursula Downs can play Unearth the Ancients as a free investigate action after she moves, so it essentially costs you nothing uh, to bring the tooth into play with her. Ursula has uh, 4 willpower and 5 agility with a tooth in play, which is uh, quite good against common treachery such as Rotting Remains, Frozen in Fear, or uh, Locked Door. Odds are you will uh, need to commit a card or two if you want to ensure that you will pass those skill tests, but at least you will get to draw a card uh, with the tooth in return, which mitigates uh, some of the impact uh, on your hand. It's uh, worth noting that the Tooth is non-unique, so you could have two of them in play if you uh, tutor one up with Dr. Ellie Horowitz and play the other uh, in your accessory slot. You could also double up on them if you pick up Relic Hunter from the Essex County Express expansion. If the uh, Treacheries in the Forgotten Age really hammer willpower uh, and agility, boosting those skills by two apiece uh, and potentially drawing two cards each successful test certainly has its appeal. 
at least until you can afford to purchase a, a more powerful relic such as the Key of Geese once you've got some experience. I uh, suspect the Tooth is slightly better value in solo than uh, multiplayer. If you're playing in solo, you bear the full brunt of the encounter deck, which in turn creates more chances for the Tooth to trigger. The odds of seeing a treachery with a willpower or agility skill test goes down when you, uh, as you add more players, so uh, those resources may be better spent, better off spent elsewhere. As much as I like the uh, the tooth, uh, there are a couple problems with this card. First, it uh, the passive skill boost is uh, very narrow in its application. The Tooth won't help you if you need a little bit of extra agility to evade an enemy, something I expect uh, Ursula to do a lot of given her combat skill value of 1. And uh, 2, the Tooth is purely defensive. The Tooth may improve the odds of surviving what the encounter deck throws at you, but it's uh, not really going to help you uh, advance your win condition. We have seen a few cards that uh, force, invest force you to investigate with agility, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a few more in this cycle. I like the fact that the uh, the tooth is an extra source of card draw, but unless you're extremely lucky and uh, pull nothing but elder signs plus one and zero tokens from the chaos bag, you're uh, probably only going to be breaking even on cards most of the time. That said, I have had a chance to play this in uh, in the first scenario of the Forgotten Age cycle in uh, Ursula, and I think it's actually quite good in uh, in that particular scenario and I'll be interested to see whether it can hold its weight as the cycle continues. There are only three level zero cards with the relic trait in the game and uh, the tooth is a decent option to include in an Ursula deck at the start of a campaign. The accessory slot is wide open and Ursula has uh, several ways to cheat the tooth into play if she runs low on resources. I'm uh, not enthusiastic about playing the Tooth in other Seeker builds if you don't have the room uh, for the other Relic tech. However, I uh, may change my tune after playing a few scenarios, a few more scenarios in the Forgotten Age cycle. Ultimately, the uh, the Tooth's value really depends on the makeup the uh, makeup of the encounter deck. If there are a lot of uh, treacheries that demand willpower and agility skill tests, the uh, Tooth the Tooth's value is going to go way up. If uh, enemies are more prevalent, its uh, value is going to go down a little bit. Based on some of the cards we received last cycle, I feel like uh, the enemy count is uh, bound to go up, but uh, that's just speculation on my part. Uh, judging from the first uh, couple, uh, or at least the first uh, scenario in the, uh, the Forgotten Age box, it seems like uh, enemies aren't that much more common than they were, uh, they were before. The final Seeker card in the box is Unearth the Ancients. It's a one-cost event with two intellect resource icons and the insight trait. It has the game text Investigate. Choose a Seeker asset in your hand. The difficulty of this skill test is equal to the chosen asset's printed cost. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues, put the chosen asset into play. If that asset has the relic trait, draw one card. I've mentioned this card uh, a few times already during this review, and I think that it's a good indication as any of just how well the, uh, seeker the Seeker cards in this box synergize with one another. If you're a new player uh, looking for a place to start in the Forgotten Age, you can't really go wrong if you uh, combine the Seeker cards in this box with the Seeker cards in the core set in an Ursula Downs deck. If you pepper it with a few neutral cards, uh, you're good to go and you can start playing right away. Unearth the Ancients is an interesting card because it explores some new design space. Since the days of the core set, Seekers have uh, had to content to fuel their assets and talents with the plentiful resources gener generated by Dr. Mylan Christopher. Unearth the Ancients gives uh, them a new option to generate resource advantage in, in the form of an, of an investigate action. Any Seeker worth his or her salt shouldn't have a problem passing a relatively easy intellect skill test to put an asset into play for free. There are, uh, there are more than a dozen Seeker assets, and there are quite a few ju juicy targets among them. If you're placing, playing Daisy Walker, there's the Encyclopedia, Old Book of Lore, or uh, even Medical Texts. If you, you need more mobility, playing Pathfinder for free is a very attractive option. If you need to gather more uh, clues, Arcane Insight, or the upgrades uh, for the Archaic Glyphs are worth a look. There are only three Seeker cards with the Relic Trade at the moment, but if you play one of them with Unearth the Ancients, you get to draw a card too, which is uh, pretty sweet. 
Hell, you could even play Dr. Mylan Christopher for free uh, if you're confident that you can pass that Intellect 4 skill test. If, uh, if you're able to do that, you should not have any resource issues whatsoever uh, for the remainder of the game. I've talked about the synergy between the, the Seeker cards in this box before, but it's worth emphasizing that uh, Unearth the Ancients really starts to shine in an Ursula Downs deck. After Ursula moves to a location, uh, she gets to take a free Investigate action. Unearth the Ancients counts as an Investigate action, so Ursula essentially gets to play it as a free action. For the cost of a resource and an Intellect 3 skill test, she can uh, play Dr. Ellie Horowitz, who fetches a Relic, which also enters play for free. If that relic happens to be the uh, Tooth of Estley, we're looking at, uh, we were looking at earlier, you're saving yourself uh, six resources, and uh, that's pretty fantastic value no matter how you look at it. It's also worth noting that uh, Unearth the Ancients has the insight trait, which means you can copy it with uh, eidetic memory, the uh, Seeker event from Dim Carcosa. Unearth the Ancients is a, a very solid addition to the Seeker card pool that's uh, going to find its way into a lot of decks. Investigators have been generating resource advantage with the Dr. Mylan Christopher since the days of the core set. There's uh, nothing wrong with that, but it does come at the cost of tying up the ally slot, which is uh, easily the most valuable in the game. Unearth the Ancients gives investigators another approach to uh, generating resource advantage that is uh, not only thematic, but it's also effective. That... Uh, that uh, should uh, in turn encourage some players to take a, take a second look at, at some of the other allies that this game has to offer rather than automatically defaulting to uh, Dr. Mylan Christopher as their ally choice. In the long run, that's, uh, that's good for deck diversity and uh, the health of the game. Needless to say, I uh, really like the approach of, to uh, the card design here, and I'm... Uh, Looking forward to seeing more cards like Unearth the Ancients in the future. The uh, only knock I can think about, I can think of about this card is that it uh, requires a skill test. I've been a little hesitant to pull the trigger on playing Unearth the Ancients because of that, but I uh, think I just need to get a little bit, uh, just need a little bit more time to get used to uh, to playing with this card and uh, just getting more comfortable with it. If I don't play it, it's it's still got the uh, the two intellect skill icons, which is great. Unfortunately, the skill test requirement means this card is probably not very good on hard or expert difficulty, but uh, that is a relatively minor quibble with an otherwise great card. That's going to do it for my review of the Seeker cards in the Forgotten Age. I really like what the uh, the designers have done here. All of the Seeker cards in the box synergize extremely well together, which uh, makes it relatively easy for a beginner to build a deck and uh, start playing. Dr. Ellie Horowitz is such a fantastic ally that uh, I'm really hoping we see an upgraded version of her at some point in this cycle. Ancient Stone Ident Unidentified is a bit of an unknown, but I expect the upgrader upgrades to be quite powerful because uh, we already have some very powerful relics competing uh, for Ursula's attention and uh, Ancient Stone's going to need to bring its A-game if it wants to have a shot at, uh, at that Relic slot. I feel like uh, Ursula is missing a little something at the moment, and perhaps the upgrade for Ancient Stone will uh, flesh her out a little bit. Now that I've had a chance to play the, the Untamed Wilds, I think the Tooth of uh, Etsli is a good choice for Ursula, who could use that little boost in the Willpower Department. And uh, Unearth the Ancients is a, uh, another solid card that is going to save you quite a few resources as long as you're willing to risk a uh, pull from the Chaos Bag. Seekers have uh, done very well for themselves in uh, the past few cycles, and it looks like the class is uh, going to discover another bounty uh, during the Forgotten Age. That's going to do it for my review. If you enjoyed, if you enjoyed this review, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromling at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromling. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.